Hello YouTube viewers and welcome to the second installment of the Break It Down Draft Prospect Profile uh, series I'm running here on the Weekly Huddle Podcast YouTube channel. Um, this are going to be YouTube specific uh, episode, so you got to be you know subscribe and like all the videos and specifically subscribe and hit that bell to make sure that you can uh, come in and see all the videos of this. Uh, today we're going to be doing running back Zach Moss out of Utah. Um, I'm having a theme here just because we're we're generally going with uh, me and Tabor, our Bills fans. So I'm just going running through some of the more uh, important picks, if not all of the picks the Buffalo Bills made in the draft this year. Um, after that, I'll be moving on to next year's draft. Uh, I do hope to get through most of the class next year. I won't do all of them. I'll only you know pick and choose some of my favorite prospects to cover or prospects I think aren't getting enough love by you know the actual. Uh, draft media so that'll be my goal is just to you know pick a few out of however many i'm doing to show you the film and how i'm breaking it down and looking at players myself and what i'm looking for in a, in a player uh today i have two films for you uh one is gonna be against washington which is gonna be the first one and then against uh the university of california aka cal um last year these teams were number 28th and 27th ranked uh respectively in run defense uh, Washington was 28th with 126.4 yards per game allowed. They uh, I I, they weren't ranked in the game they faced Utah. I'm pretty sure Utah wins this one. But uh, despite them being a decent run defense, uh, Moss went for 27 touches for 100 yards and a touchdown, as well as five receptions for 41 yards and touchdown. Now I'll get into um, the pros and cons later, but I kind of looked for a game where they would face high level defenses. And also since one of his criticisms are pass catching, you know, uh, receiving ability out of the backfield, I looked for games where he also had a decent amount of catching. So we'll get right into it. I picked out a couple plays here to really showcase what I'm looking at when I'm watching his film. So our first play here is going to be against Washington. It's a little buffery. Oh, also shout out to uh, Destination Devi and FF Astronauts for the videos I'm getting today. I'll leave their uh, the videos in the description. Go definitely go follow them. So the first uh, first piece of film we got here, he is going to take it up the middle. It's more of a dive, and I mean the offensive line doesn't give him much help, but he does. He's able to make he gets hit at the line of scrimmage here, and is able to fall forward, which is a key thing with him. Is that he is he's short at 5'9", but he has some power and will always fall forward when he gets hit, so it's not like he's going to be getting a lot of negative yardage. But a big thing here is, so he can get the short yardage, but the big thing here is he could have bounced it outside. He had these uh, blockers out here with him. So he definitely could have bounced it outside, and I mean, that's not really what you're getting while you draft Zach Moss, is for him to bounce it outside. It's more of a, uh, you draft him just so that he can take it up the middle as he does here. which So he's not very comfortable with it. But if he would have did it, he definitely probably would have gotten more yards than he did here. But, again, he still was able to turn nothing into something on this play. Okay. Next up is going to be this, uh, this play is going to show off his best overall trait as a runner, and which I think will translate the most NFL, uh, is his ability to break tackles and have amazing contact balance. So this is one where he does bounce outside. And the reason he probably doesn't bounce it out more often is, is because he's not that amazing of an athlete in the open field. Like he can't jump cut, spin, you know, break some tackles, things like that, just to really, you know, or have like the good getaway speed. But what he does do very, very well is he has a low pad level, which allows him to ha break tackles by just using his power alone, and he has amazing contact balance. So here, he's being pulled to the side by this defender who has it around his shoulder. He's able to shrug him off and stay balanced and run forward, drop his shoulder and pick up more yards and using that low pad level to get more yards and power. Pulling the pile all the way up to almost the 40. So he's getting 14, 15 yards on this play and not only did he was able to find lane outside, which vision is another good um, trait of his, he's able to find the hole outside and then use his contact balance to go break the first tackle, and then his low pad level to push the pile to get the first down. So on this next play, he showed on the last play that he can take it to the outside, and this play is another one of those where he goes 
to his hole, but these two tackle is going a good job crossing the face of his guard and filling up this hole. So the dive was originally supposed to go there. Instead, he's going to see that this kickout block works, and this he's going to crack it on his DB. He's going to get the jump cut, so he's going to be going forward, just jump cut and for and accelerate to the outside, hit that hole with some speed, and get to the outside, which makes me believe that he can do this more often in the NFL instead of just being a straight twin tackle runner. Again, more good contact balance and just able to drop a shoulder and get that first down. Nose with sticks. Always something you want in your running back. Okay, so this next play is going to be a screen pass where he's able to sell the fake good. Looks for pass block, blast block, and he gets out there. As soon as he gets the ball in his hands, he turns to a runner. So it's he... he He's not one of those running backs that can go out like a Chris McCaffrey and line up at receiver and you know run crisp routes and beat a corner off the line. But when he gets the ball in his hands, he turns into a runner very effectively. Uh, you know, catch, boom, he's gone. And then when he's in the open field, he doesn't have the all the ability of like all the jump cuts, but he can use his pad level and just his contact balance to get around players. He, to he breaks tackle, gets in the tackle, and only here's why. He, that DB is able to stop right there if he gets his ankle. If he bounces off him on his thigh or something, he's gone. It's just he has great contact balance on those good, like if someone come up and try to wrap him up or hit him, he'll be able to, he's, he's able to bounce off one or two tackles and break one or two tackles and then get down the field for more yards. Now on this play, he's going to have a receiving touchdown, which is where he's just running a simple out, out from the backfield, which is where the quarterback will look so if like it's a hot route, like, hey, I'm feeling pressure or no one's open, I'll just toss off to you. Looks, gets it out to him. He's able to stiff arm and break the tackle and dive for the pylon. So this one on one, the D B tries to bring him down. Or he it may even be a linebacker. It's a linebacker. Comes in, tries to bring him down, and he's able to just continue running because he has a strong lower body. He's able to, with that contact balance, strong lower body is what where's that come from, where is where that comes from. He's able to shake that off and get to the pylon to get the touchdown while dragging a linebacker and move still moving forward. So despite his height, he does have some he does have some very good power, which is what you know they kind of need with the Bills kind of need with Devin Singletary now in the backfield. He's more of that quicky jitterbug guy. This next play, he's gonna have a good read. comes and gets, gets the ball here it's more of a zone replay so he's, it's either here or here and he reads that this linebacker is waiting for him in the hole so he waits he uses he, he shows it's not like one of his biggest strengths but he does show it occasionally he has extremely good patience so he comes in he here he, there's a combo block between his guard and his tackle he's waiting 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 for his guard to come off the block and get up to the linebacker it bursts through the hole as soon as that happens and then gets upfield. Shows really good contact balance and power in his lower body to keep moving the pile, which will be a running theme with this film. So on this play, he's going to get the ball. He's Now he's surrounded. He's got the linebacker setting the edge, D-tackles winning his battle. He's got this little lane here, but he also has another linebacker here. DB will, find, will eventually notice that it's a run play now, so he's going to make a decision where he needs to go. Cuts it up, so that linebacker was there to cut off the outside angle here. He comes down under in, underneath the uh, lineman instead of bouncing it out, and he's able to cut underneath them and show some of that athletic ability. Use that, I mean, like, he's stumbling. He's getting, he has him wrapped up, and he's able to break the tackle and maintain his balance through contact, and burst the field for even more yards. Okay, on this last play, this is where last year was Frank Gore, year before that was Chris Ivory, year before that was Mike Tolbert with the how they McDermott wants to build his run game, you know, strong in between the tackles with the flash. This is where he'll come in for the in the end zone, fourth and short, third and goal short. He's able to come in, find the find a small crease if anything and drop his shoulder and just get into the end zone so he he gets up that crease right there he cuts up this crease and then just drops his shoulder and runs over the db who's trying to protect the line the line to get 
Gets in, touchdown. Easy short yardage play. So now in this next game, he's facing Cal, who let up 126.3 rush yards per game. He ended up with 17 carries for 115 yards and two touchdowns. Three receptions for 84 yards and no touchdowns on the receiving. This first play, he's backed up in his own end zone. Now, he can't he can't really afford to lose any yards here. So he needs to be able to get upfield. He makes the read, sees that everyone has ch- you know dove inside to prevent the up to the gut, you know, just gaining a few yards. And I mean, he gets met there, so he doesn't show like like I said, he has a lack of elite physical, you know, shake and bake kind of thing on the open field. But he was able to cut out, you know, jump cut out, find the right lane with his good vision, and drops his shoulder, just gets a few yards because that's what he's going to do in the open field. That's what you're paying a guy like Zach Moss to do in the open field is just run over people, use his power to his advantage. You know, he's you know he's not going to bring a lot to the table like a Saquon Barkley who's going to shake players out of their boots kind of thing. So on this play, the quarterback drops the snap. Moss sees it. He goes out just because he needs. He knows he needs to get out. Let his quarterback give him a little hot route. Scramble drill. You want to get away from the quarterback, and if you look around and see a defender, he sees this defender's coming down. He goes away from him and further out. That's what you do in a scramble drill. He understands that he's good with his understanding and how to give the quarterback a good safety valve. Because of that, the quarterback's able to find him. And he's got all that open space to just run. Now, this also so this was a great play for him as a receiver, but it shows his lack of you know elite speed. A normal player like Adele Kilk is going to have this touchdown no problem, but he gets caught up here at like the five yard line, so he doesn't have that elite speed. I'm not sure what he ran at the combine, but I don't believe. He, I think he was like a four or five, four six around there. He doesn't have the best speed at running back. But he has decent enough. He got it down to the five. But he won't be able to outrun good angle tacklers like that. But he did have a great play at receiver. And usually you're paying him for just short yard situations or just, you know, it's not really, you're not really going to knock him for not being able to do stuff in the open field. That's not what you drafted him for. You knew what you were getting with him. So his next play would be a touchdown at the next level. At the NFL level, we have the tight end wing back here. He's going to go out for a kickout block on the right side. Moss, he's just supposed to be for a seal, and then Moss cuts it up underneath him, but this tight end misses his block right here. He just kind of runs his shoulder into him, and the defenseman, defenseman, defender is able to just shrug him off, get in there and make the play. If that blocker can actually make the kickup block, it's a touchdown, no problem, no doubt in my mind. So Moss has just... Imagine 19 isn't on him right now. Moss has daylight touchdown, easy game, easy touchdown. Just has to get better blocking there. But great read, and that read that was a such a good read that he would have had an easy touchdown despite everything in the middle being clogged up. All right, here's another play where it shows his good usage and short yardage, and on the goal line, this is gonna be another touchdown within the five. They use a lot of motion, like how the Bills do with like Isaiah McKenzie and their tight ends. They like to shift around, move the linebackers a little bit, get some, see where they can find any holes. He gets the handoff. It's supposed to be an inside zone read. Comes in, finds this little crease here, and just bursts through it. Drops the shoulder and is able to just fall fall forward into the end zone. He's very good at falling forward. Like I said, he won't get any negative plays, and especially and that is an especially good trait at the goal line so that way if you get contact in that hole you'll still fall forward across and break the plane and get the touchdown I had to throw one more in it's just an amazing example of his contact balance which is his absolute best trade in my opinion he gets his hand off and he sees the holes here or there's a bounce out route he, it's another zone read so he can choose whichever hole he'd like he sees the linebacker Edging it, so he picks it to bounce it outside. This, I believe it's a linebacker, 89, maybe at the end. Hits him, bounces off of him, he just keeps running. So this play, everyone's crashing down to the left. 
they had they read the play the run blocking is more is another zone concept so there's like a zone here he can he eventually cuts it back and bounces outside but he reads that that he was supposed to have like a zone here maybe a zone up in here it was supposed to be an inside zone with the way the blocking scheme is set up they all crash left so he decides to cut it outside which is she shows off his great vision brushes off that number 19 from earlier and is able to just keep going upfield Makes a good little juke move in the open space. Like he has some athletic ability. Obviously, he's a D one athlete. He's in the NFL. He's the run pick, but it's not like the most elite trait he has. So he's able to just you know avoid tacklers. And when he does get you know a hand or two on him, he'll be able he's able to shrug him off, and then drop his shoulder, get as much yards as he can. Okay, so in summary, we're gonna go through his pros and cons. Like I said, contact balance, vision, and pad level, which is what he's not only a five nine. He does have that more like beef. I believe Devin Singletary is like an inch shorter, but he's only two oh five. So he's got another twenty pounds on him. But he has, and even though he's that short, it's kind of a benefit for him because that way he's able to keep his pad level low and in turn uses lower body strength to use get power instead of like a Derrick Henry who's just huge. He's more of a guy who can stay low to the ground, and that's where he gets his power from. Um, his cons are going to be his moves in space. Like he showed a few of them, but it's not consistent. He'd more, much more rather look for contact, drop his shoulder, instead of trying to avoid it and break people's ankles in space. Um, his receiving ability has a lot to gain from. Like I said, he can do on that screens or you know little out routes. But if you want, expect him to line up and like you know be an elite receiving talent from a running back like a Christian McCaffrey, it's not going to happen. That's not what you're going to get from Moss. Also, I believe he tore his ACL um, two seasons ago, so he does have the injury history. I believe he's fully recovered at this point, but he just needs this is one thing you need to look at again. Um, and outside of that, yeah, I'm very excited for Zach Moss to be a part of the Buffalo Bills, and I look forward to seeing what he can do because his skill set excites me, as in he can go out there and make plays and do the you know gritty grind out some yards and stuff that we need on this team in the absence of Frank Gore now that he's a New York Jet. Yes, New York Jet. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, these are definitely my favorite videos to make just because I'm a big draft nut. So um, all the love I can get for these uh, will be well appreciated. But uh, until next time, uh, I'll see you guys later.